Ouija boards in film is nothing new. Take a look at 1944's The Uninvited. Yeah, it may not be the Hasbro version that we all know and love, but the same concept is there. And this scene is particularly important as this is one of the first uses of the Ouija game on screen to depict some horror elements. Over the years, we get other examples such as 13 Ghosts and of course The Exorcist, but it wasn't until 1986's Witchboard where the Ouija game was the central focus of the plot. Originally, it was going to be called Ouija, but there was fear of copyright infringement, so the title was changed to Witchboard which I personally like a lot more. So being the first film to focus solely on this board, how does it fare? Well, let's find out together. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Which board starts at a party hosted by Linda and her boyfriend, Jim. At the party is Brandon, who is Linda's ex. He's kind of a jerk and Jim hates him. Brandon brings out an Ouija board, which is a total buzzkill move. Trust me, I know from experience. With the help of Linda, they try to conjure the spirit of a 10-year-old boy named David. David is someone that Brandon contacts often and they know each other by this figure eight pattern. Well, Jim is a real jerk and makes David the ghost mad and we get this awesome little moment. All right. It's really racing. Yeah, maybe he's late. The last flight back to limbo. Well, Brandon ends up forgetting the Ouija board. And the next day, Linda decides to play with it herself. At first, the spirit of David is super nice and super helpful, but there may be some malice going on in the background. Employment means nothing to me, pal. While at work, an accident happens which kills Jim's best friend. Was it an accident or the work of a darker force? Brandon figures out that Linda is playing with the board alone and he instinctively gets worried. He confronts Jim about it. You see, Jim and Brandon, they used to be best friends as kids. Brandon dated Linda first and when Jim came back to town, Linda had already broken up with Brandon and then met Jim. The two begin to realize that Linda could be in trouble. The force in the board is causing Linda to fall into the stage of entrapment, which could lead to possession. So the psychic Sarah Beth is called to perform an exorcism on the apartment. Sarah Beth is played by Kathleen Willoit, who was in Dream Demon, which I covered. Through a seance, the ghost David decides to leave the apartment. Now on her way home, Sarah Beth finds it weird that David knew Portuguese, you know, considering he was a 10 year old American boy. Well, maybe the force in the board isn't David after all. The unknown force kills Sarah Beth and it is up to Brandon and Jim to figure out who's possessing the board, how to save Linda and how to put a stop to all of these murders. Now, before going over the pros and cons, I wanna open up a little bit. Normally, when I review a movie on this channel, it's my first time seeing it. I like finding and reviewing obscure horror films, but I've actually watched Witchboard when I was pretty young. It was recommended to me when I was a teen, and I remember loving the opening, getting bored in the middle, and then hating the ending. I even stole the opening jump scare and used it in my own little short movie. Do you still love sage? I haven't seen Witchboard in probably 16 years or so, and I was excited to see if my opinion had changed. Even though I still agree that the opening is fantastic and the ending is uh, not my favorite, the opinion on the film overall has changed drastically. I loved watching Witchboard. It's really well made 80s goodness. Let's list all the positives. The score is one of my favorite horror scores. It's so darn good. The story is phenomenal. It's deep. The characters are super fleshed out. There's real motivation and each character is written well. Acting is pretty good for a low budget horror flick. The script is great and the idea of this story is engaging. Some scenes are genuinely spooky. Cinematography is solid. 
First time director Kevin Tenney made such a great film, especially for this being his directorial debut. He's a cult horror legend making Witchboard, Witch Trap, The Cellar, and Night of the Demons. No, I've covered Night of the Demons if you're interested in that review, and if you want to know anything about The Cellar, check out Retro Analog Entertainment's review of it. Steve does great work, let him know I sent you. So what's there not to love about Witchboard? Well, there's not a lot of kills or gore, so if you're into that, sorry. Sometimes the story focuses too much on dialogue, characters, and backstories, and not enough on atmosphere. Some shots tend to linger, and at times the camera has a hard time focusing on the right part. I also don't love the ending. It's a bit hokey. I love the idea of the ending, but the execution is where it falls flat for me. Which board is must-see 80s horror goodness? Some moments should genuinely spook you, and the story should be engaging enough for horror fans. Check it out if it looks like your cup of tea, and that's all I have for tonight, so thank you so much for watching, and stay spooky, everyone. So which board? Based on a board game. Technically, what other horror movies can you think of that are based on games? I'd love to know in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.